Good morning, guys. Welcome to the vlog. It is about seven o'clock. We're up before the sun because I'm heading out to a sale today. There's so much ice on these cars. Look, that's no ice. That's ice. So I'm out the front of the sale right now. It opened at 8 o'clock, it's 8.20. I'm gonna head in, I'm not gonna bring the camera in, I'm just gonna work away and see what I find in there. And also I should mention, it is a book sale, a second-hand used book sale. So, let's see how we go. So unfortunately, today's vlog was an absolute disaster. From this point onwards in the vlog, I'm recording this at the end of the day, but from where I was about to enter the sale from just before, I lost all the footage from there for the rest of the day. So I can't show you guys what I picked up today, nor could I show you the cool stuff that I did today, which, which was something that I really wanted to get on camera, but unfortunately, it was a complete waste. I just ended up talking to myself and a camera without an audience getting to see it. It's pretty disappointing. There must have been something wrong with the SD card because like every 20 seconds it must have like cut out like it was recording and then it just didn't save the file. But everything is corrupt and wiped from existence. And I've also had some other technical difficulties trying to upload vlogs. I've just been a little bit late at the moment because I lost my cord for my hard drive and everything's just been a disaster but hopefully we can get back on track after this vlog is up then hopefully no more difficulties from there onwards but I guess it's just something to expect when you're doing daily vlogs that especially for me I'm just learning the process of doing so I am bound to come across some mistakes here and there and this is just one of them but I want to give you guys some kind of value in today's vlog so what I'm gonna do is share my bookkeeping setup with you guys, share with you how I document my eBay sales, my Etsy sales, my Amazon sales, and how I figure out how much profit, which is cash getting into my pocket after fees, after I pay for everything, in Google Sheets. So let me get onto the screen share, and I'll share with you how I do that. Alright, so let's do this. So you want to head over to google.com.au or .com slash sheets slash about. I'll have the link down below for this page here. If you want to check this out, you can also do it on, I just said here, like I was an American or some someone who's not Australian. Anyway, you can do this one or you can do Excel, I believe, can do it as well. And there's other programs out there, like you could use GoDaddy Bookkeeping. There's so many programs. This is free. This works fine for me. It's just very simple and basic. Go to Sheets. And then it will give you this link here. If you want to start a new one, you just click blank. And that'll give you a blank grid what you can work with. I have about three that I'm using at the moment. One for eBay, one for Amazon, and one for Etsy. But for the case of the video, I'm going to be doing eBay because the question that I got asked was how I document the eBay PayPal fees into a spreadsheet. So let me go over to the eBay one. And this is what it looks like. So it is very simple, it's nothing complicated, and I'm sure there's better ways to do this. But again, for the sake of the video, this is my way. This isn't the best way, this is just how I do it. And I'm just sharing that with you. So the first one I have items. So what I'll do is just copy and paste the product's item. I try and copy and paste the link in the title, so I'll copy and paste it when you get to see like all of your items together. And then it has that link to the item there. So if you want to check out further information, you can click on it. But with eBay, eventually that link becomes insufficient because over time they don't hold that data anymore. But it's just good for just, you know, within a few days or so, so you can go back to it if you need to. Then I have paid in the next one. Most of the first stuff here that I've sold, I've just put zero because it is some of the stuff that I had around the house and I was just clearing out. And for example, the broken drone, like I just put zero even though I paid $500 for it. It's still priceless to me because I got a lot of use out of it. I got some footage out of it, which I might be able to sell that footage down the track to companies and stuff like that. So it's kind of irrelevant to have that there. And then the next one I have sold. So how much I sold the item for. Next is fees. So this is inclusive of eBay and the PayPal fees all together. So, that, so that's final value with shipping. That's insertion fees, even though I don't really pay those. And that's like the final fee after selling it. Fee. and then it's PayPal fees as well and that's all in together so I can just see it as one round number then I have postage received so this is how much the buyer paid me to pay for postage and then I have the amount that I actually paid the post office for the postage and then the last figure is profit and that's basically all it is 
The, the reason why it's all green here is because that's the money coming in and then the white is the money that's going out. So this is a positive figure essentially and the white one is a negative figure, if that makes any sense. So let's go over to this one here. We have some Iron Million boots. I paid $45.25 for them. They sold for $170. It worked out to be $34 in fees and then they paid $45 for shipping and I paid $34 for shipping. Now the shipping here is really expensive because it was an international item, so I had to send it overseas. And it works out to be a profit of just over $100 right there. To figure out this, I don't even have to calculate, like with a, a calculator, how much profit I got or how much fees I have to pay. Let me explain that process with you. The fee amount isn't exact and an official amount, it is just a estimated round number. Now this is good and bad, I guess, but I try and do it at 20% fees. Most of the time it's gonna be lower than that. That's fine with me. If I calculate too high, then that means I have more money saving. But most of the time it works out to be about 20% for me. It's also going to differ depending on if you have an eBay store and, and many other attributes as well. For my specific situation, it's 0.2 over 1 or 20%. So the reason how I figure that out, so how I get this amount here, all I do is this. I go C2, which is the sold. C is all my sold items or sold amounts. So that is what the fees are getting taken out of. So I go C2 times by, if you can see up here, it has the equation, but you gotta make sure that you put in an equal sign before you do anything else. That's just how Google Sheets calculates it by putting the equals first. So it's C2 times by, which is that asterisk thing, 0.2. So that's 20% in decimals. Then automatically it'll work out the amount for me like that. Now you're gonna have a problem where you get all these you get all these amounts here, but this is gonna be blank and you're not gonna get any totals. So what you do is you use this little square here in the bottom right corner of this cell and you just drag it down and that automatically instates that equation into every other cell but it makes it specific to D3, D4, or C4, C5, C6, and so on. And it'll work it out for the rest of them using that same equation here. It's smart and it just knows how to do it. And this is a super cool trick because it is going to save you a lot of time. Doing it this way with the 20% fees, it saves me having to go into the eBay fee section, looking up, okay, the New Balance running pants. They sold for $9.99. eBay took. $1.70, PayPal took 81 cents, and then eBay took another 70 cents for the final value fee or something like that. Then I have to go add up those three figures, work it out, and then put it in there. This way, it's just instant 20%. It's just so much easier and it's saving me so much time. And, and with the postage received and postage paid, that's an amount that I put in individually. Most cases, it's pretty easy. If I know that Havianas are gonna weigh under 500 grams, it's gonna be $8.50 and I'm gonna pay $7.40. That's just how it works all the time. And then with the profit, you just put in another equation here. So this is the equation that I'm using right now. So it's C2, so it's C2, which is sold, plus E2, which is the postage. So it's plusing the ones that come in, these two plus together. Sorry, I'm pointing at the screen when I should be using the cursor. So then I take away B2, I take away D2, and I take away F2. And I put the equation in like so. And then it comes up with the amount here in profit. And then again, if you want to put that equation into all the cells, you drag it down and it will give you all of the profit margins right there. Now, I see a lot of people don't actually show you this information on how to do the equations on YouTube. Some people are selling these sort of documents to people with the equations in there. Now, I'm not sure if I can give you the this one with the equations in it. But if I can, I will. I have a link down below for this if I can share it with you. And I don't want any money for it. I'll just chuck it down below so you can all so you can all just do it like that. Again, you'll have to change the fees to apply for your specific situation. And if you want, you might want to even just add in the fees exactly how they come. But for me, this is how I do it and it just works fine for me. Okay, so let's head over to eBay and I wanna give you an example of how I do it step-by-step by, step by adding a product into this system. So what I'll do, I'll normally copy and paste the title 
but it's from the previous screen with the list of sold items. I just don't want to show that screen on camera. I don't want to expose the buyer's details and information. I want to keep it private and I want to ensure their privacy. So what I'll do is I'll copy and paste that title from that screen, which then will ensure that I have a link when I paste it in here. So I'll have it in there like that. I also do have a separate document for all the items that I've brought and what I paid for it, just like what I brought, what I paid. And that's a separate one only because, the only reason why I have that separate is because I like to have different documents for the sold stuff so then I can look directly at what's sold and not have to have gaps between the data. I like to have it all together and just having it flow nicely. So I'll head over to my purchases and I'll just fill in the amounts here. So that's, I brought it for 17, sold it for 55. And then if I drag this down, it should give me the fees here. They paid 13.80. I shipped it for that much. And then I'll drag this down. It should figure me out the profit. So it's as easy as that. That's how quickly it takes. And again, my fee amount is going to be different to yours. I live in Australia as well. For those of you that live in other countries, it might be different because in Australia, we have a Netflix tax that takes out more on the fee side of things. So just have that in mind as well. All our situations are different. So that's going to produce a different fee amount. But I think that's about it for today's video. Hopefully I answered the question correctly and it was helpful to most of you guys that wanted to know how I do my bookkeeping. So this is how I do it. Thanks again for watching. Sorry about today's vlog. Unfortunately, it wasn't all it turned out to be. But make sure you give me a thumbs up and also drop a comment down below if you have any more questions and I'll be glad to make some videos like this in future. But thanks again. See ya in the next one. Bye.